Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about to end another video? This is another request, this time for 2JC. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, whether it be a topic, a reaction, a review, a commentary, a re-review, pretty much anything, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. But this is uh, 2JC. He had a list of his Spider-Man movies, worst to best, at least for him, and he wanted me to react to it. I said, okay, that's fine. So I'm going to go through it quick, and then I'll go back and get my thoughts on it. Then this, to him, and he includes the Venom movies, worst to his favorite. 11 Venom, 10 Venom 2, 9 Spider-Man Far From Home, 8 Amazing Spider-Man 1, 7 Spider-Man 3, 6 Amazing Spider-Man 2, 5 Spider-Man Homecoming, 4 Spider-Man the first Tobey Maguire one, 3 Spider-Man No Way Home, 2 Into the Spider-Verse, 1 Spider-Man 2. Now let's go back. Venom, Venom 2. Uh, I actually ve think Venom 2 is worse than Venom 1, so I disagree with that. Venom 2 is worse, to, in my opinion, because Venom, you have a ability for a sequel now that you've established the character to do more with Venom, and you do less with Venom. Venom does nothing in the sequel. Venom is bitching about his chicken. Maybe wants to choke his chicken. I don't know. He's crying about his chicken. He has a fight with his butt boy, butt buddy, Tom Hardy. Because he's bad that Tom Hardy doesn't want to do the Flying 69 with him. So he leaves. He goes to a club. He does a mic drop. That mic drop alone makes it worse than the first Venom. And then you get Woody Harrelson as Carnage, and you completely waste him in a neutered PG-13 snorefest. Where Carnage can't be Carnage because the fucking rating system snipped and castrated the balls away from the Carnage character. And Venom, who does Venom kick ass? When does Venom take names? When does Venom do anything? When is he the ruthless protector? The lethal protector, as you say. With his uh, ruthless aggression. Where the fuck is any of this? It's not in it. Doesn't exist. And then you get this long fight between Venom and Carnage, which just seems like a, I will admit, bit better edited version of the first Venom. And I will say, at least Venom 2, the end fight is better edited. It's less confusing. But still, just another symbiote versus symbiote fight. And there's no... What's the word I'm looking for? Not, it's not surprise, but there's there's nothing... Oh, wow, I haven't seen that before. Yes, you have, because he fought another symbiote in the, just the previous film. Is, what, is that what they're going to do with every Venom film? He just fights another symbiote? The first symbiote he fought should have been Carnage. And he should have saved that. But no, I mean... So I don't like either Venom film, but I think the first one's a bit better. Because... Venom 2... You didn't just fuck up Venom, you fucked up Carnage as well. And to me, that makes Venom 2 a worse sin. Is that you fucked up both of them. Venom just fucked up Venom. Venom 2, you fucked up Venom and Carnage. So to me, Venom 2 is worse. But, I mean, there's there's still at the bottom. Uh, I would still say Spider-Man 3 is the worst of all these movies. Spider-Man 3 is fucking utter atrocious garbage. I disagree with Far From Home being so low on the list. I think... If I had a pick, I think that's the best of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. I think J. Jonah Hall does a rather good job as Mysterio. I did like the finale, the use of Spider-Sense. 
and the way that was played out. I still have a lot of issues with Far From Home, but of the three Tom Holland films, to me, that's the most watchable and the most tolerable. I think Far From Home is way better than No Way Home, which I'll get to that later. But yeah, I think Far From Home is too low on the list. I think it should be top three, top four. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of issues for Far From Home, but... And I think it's way better than the Amazing Spider-Man 1. Amazing Spider-Man 1, I'm not a fan of. The Lizard sucks. See, that again, I don't see why Far From Home is worse than the Amazing Spider-Man 1. Just Far From Home is a better villain. Mysterio, J. Jones is a much better villain than fucking the Lizard. Which I don't care for his design. You just say, well, it was in some of the early comics. Well, true... But Lizard also looked different in other comics. I think some of the other comics, even some of the Todd McFarlane stuff on Spider-Man, I think the Lizard looked better. I think it was a better design. And the Amazing Spider-Man, the go through the origin again, but then... I did it, you tried to do something to do with the parrots, but it just was not that interesting the way they did it. I think Amazing Spider-Man 1, no, I think it... I think Far From Home is way better than Amazing Spider-Man 1. Spider-Man 3, I think that's the worst. I hate Venom 1 and 2, but I'd rather watch them than Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 is over long. It feels like three hours long. I know it's not. Uh, it has the worst Venom still and Topher Grace. Sandman is cool, but he deserved to be in a better movie, and sadly that never happened. And I don't like To Be or Not To Be Maguire. I liked him in Pleasantville, but not as Spider-Man. I never got his Opie Taylor, Aunt B, my pie's ready attitude. It was never for me as Spider-Man. Anytime I see Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, I keep waiting to hear the Andy Griffith whistle. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Fucking Andy Griffith theme. Uh, number six, Amazing Spider-Man Two. I would put that higher. I will be honest. I would say of this list, I think that's number three for me. Into the Spider Verse is number one. I think that's the best Spider-Man movie we've had. Spider-Man Two, Sam Raimi. You know what, fuck it. I don't care. This is piss people off. I don't care. Amazing Spider-Man 2 is number two. It has a lot of issues, but you know what? I watched that again, and I saw a lot of good in it. There's a lot of bad in it. I think a lot of that could be fixed with editing. But Andrew Garfield, I think, is a good Spider-Man in Spider-Man 2. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I do. And that's why I'm, I'm watching the movie for the lead character. And the lead character, I think Andrew Garfield did a good job with the lead character in Amazing Spider-Man 2. I think the music is well done. Um, the music grew on me, I will say. The music definitely grew on me since the first time I saw that movie. And I think Andrew Garfield's worked with Gwen Stacy. Right, I don't think you should have killed her off. I think the way that's done is stupid. But I think those two actors worked well together even better in the sequel. And, uh, yeah. So, Maze Spider-Man 2 I would put as my number 2. And Into the Spider-Verse is double 1. And then Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2 is number 3. I don't like Tobey Maguire. I like Andrew Garfield more than Tobey Maguire. Because Andrew Garfield I really liked in Amazing Spider-Man 2. I liked him in it. I liked his suit in it. I liked his action scenes in it. I don't mind the action in Spider-Man 2, but the effects hold up less. You say the same with Amazing Spider-Man 2, but because Spider-Man 2 is much older, they hold up a lot less. Although I will say it does have a better villain in Doc Ock, Alfred Molina. I'll say that. That does have a better, much better villain. But it's like, okay, do I appreciate more a better hero or a better villain? For me, hero... Uh, I, if you ask me which I would rather have, I'd rather have a better hero than a better villain. If that makes sense. 
Homecoming, I think. Uh, I'd go back and forth on Homecoming. I guess based on this list, it would be. And my top five, if I have to choose. I would, I mean, I have issues with it still. I like Michael Keaton. I do like Tom Holland. But I think they have not written the character the best way. I hate the Iron Spider crap that they it fused into that. Funny enough, I think Tom Holland was the best youth in Captain America Civil War. The first Sam Raimi Spider-Man film, I don't really like. As a kid, well, I wasn't really a kid, but back, I saw that movie back to the day in the theater. And so, oh wow, there's a Spider-Man movie. And you just w wanted to love it because there was never a Spider-Man movie. But that movie doesn't hold up for me. I mean, I love Batman and Randy Savage. The effects are very dated. Uh, Willem Dafoe is very cartoonish. When he's Green Dobbin, he looks like a Power Ranger villain. When he's not, he's like, hey, <laughs> here's some cheese for your scenery chewing. I've never been a fan of the music. Uh, hell, I thought James Franco would have made a better Spider-Man than Tobey Maguire. And I fucking hate Mary Jane because she's a bitch in those movies. Especially Spider-Man 3, but... To be little I just, I don't like Mary bitch. I mean, Mary Jane bitch. I think she's a bitch in those movies. And Kirsten Dunst. Never been one of my favorite actresses. I could tolerate her in some things. I didn't... Like, Tony McGuire, I liked Pleasantville. I could deal with him in Brothers, which was more dramatic fare, but... It just, again, a lot of people, not for me. So I would put the first Spider-Man much lower. No Way Home, fuck No Way Home. I know that's your number three, teach their own. No Way Home can kiss my ass. I hate that fucking movie. I think it's a piece of fucking shit. It's a piece of overrated shit. It's fucking, th I, you know what people say the Batman is boring? The new one? No, teach their own. It's, no Way Home was boring to me. How people feel about that movie, that new Batman, is how I feel about No Way Home. I was searching for my way home while watching the film. I wanted to go home. Like the fucking Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home, go through a goddamn tornado and have it land on my fucking head. I hate that film. I think that was a bunch of jerk off nostalgia, masturbation, the spooge on faces. Just look at Tobey Maguire, look at Andrew Garfield. Yeah, and they didn't do shit. What did Andrew Garfield do? He dusted some cobwebs in a corner. What did Tobey Maguire do? He stopped Tom Holland and he got stabbed because apparently he has no spidey sense. Even though he did have spidey sense. But apparently spidey sense didn't kick in. Does Willem Dafoe stab him in the back? Do you think, does anyone have spidey sense? And Andrew, I guess Andrew Garfield didn't have spidey sense because he just watched. Maybe he's jerking it too. I don't know. There's like 50 things I fucking can bitch about No Way Home. Tom Holland is the worst Spider-Man in that movie. He's the worst fucking idiot superhero in that movie. Okay, imagine a scenario that five inmates got out of jail. Right? They stay from jail. You know they're inmates. So, you five inmates, you come home with me where I'm staying with my mom. And uh, I'll tr see if I can do something. And then you get surprised that your m they kill your mom. You have no room to be surprised. Oh, but Aunt May gave him the idea. He's only a kid. This is a guy that went through Captain America's Civil War. Was fighting against Captain America. Brought down Giant Man. Dealt with Bucky the, the, and Falcon by himself. 
all in Civil War. This is a guy that was under tutelage and got all this stuff from Robert Downey Jr. This is a guy that went up against Thanos. Fucking Thanos. Not Thanos, Hands of Fate. Thanos. Thanos. They went through the Infinity, went through the end game. The big old battle. Getting the Infinity Gauntlet, doing all this. This is a guy that dealt, dealt with Vulture, dealt with Mysterio. I'm not giving him a pass when we've seen him do all of this shit. When we was able to... Don't give me this naivety excuse. Naivete. Always naive. No, don't give me that excuse when he's going through all of this shit. Technically, this is Civil War, Endgame, before, well, Infinity War, Endgame, Homecoming, Far From Home. This is number six of his appearances. Six. And even by Civil War, he had been Spider-Man for a little bit. Six. And yet he's still this naive. To bring five supervillains into his fucking home. And now I'm going, hey Aunt May. Um, how about you and John Farrow? You go off and... I don't know, go camping, go watch, I don't know, Sweeners a couple times, or Made, or, you know, go watch Cowboys and Aliens, that's a good John Farrow movie, go watch some of John Farrow's movies, uh, and you go, go off to Disneyland, those amusement parts need business, go to Disneyland, Disney World, Disney Europe, Disney Asia, if there is one, just go anywhere, no, no, I mean, there's only five fucking supervillains, so there's no Sinister Six. There's only five. And then on the five, most of the time one of them is a good guy. Dot dot. So you have four. And then at the end, your bid finale, one of the foes off, I don't know, did some cupcakes. He went to the drive through of McDonald's. I don't know, he went somewhere. So you have all three Spider Men to fight three villains. And two of them were well, for Andrew Garfield's universe. So you see that Andrew Garfield could take these, those two on by himself. You would think. Three on three. It takes three Spider-Men to defeat these three villains. And Doc Ock. These three Spider-Men and Doc Ock. To defeat these three villains. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Me, a guy who has read Spider-Man comics, the Spider-Man has taken on the sin Sinister Six by himself. But it takes three to take on three. I, mean, I could go on for another hour, and I did what I did my fucking rant. Rage, you know. Fuck No Way Home. I could go home and shoot itself in the head. Fuck that movie. Uh, that uh, Homecoming, I, I think, is better. Far From Home, I think, is better. I think that's one of the worst Spider-Man films and easily the most overrated Spider-Man film. Uh, Spider-Man, first Sam Raimi, I'd put above it. Homecoming, I would put above it. Base Spider-Man 2, yes, I would put it above it. Fuck yes. Far From Home, I would put above it. I'd rather watch the first Venom. Not even shitting you. Because it's not three hours long. Into the Spider-Verse, I really enjoy that film. That would be number one. Spider-Man 2, again, I liked it. But that would be number three. Because with Amazing Spider-Man 2, I like Andrew Garfield and I like Gwen Stacy. I don't like Kirsten Dunst's Mary Jane. Tom McGuire, I never bought a Spider-Man, Peter Parker. When I first saw it, I tried to fool myself. Because he's Spider-Man, he's doing stuff, he's in webs. But it's like, I don't buy him. I don't buy never I don't buy him as Spider Man. Maybe I don't know. No, I don't. I don't. My opinion. So I did. My list would be Into the Spider Verse number one. Maybe Spider Man two number two. Spider Man two San Raimi number three. Far from home number four. 
I guess Homecoming number five. The I guess Spider Man one number six. I'd rather watch the first Amazing Spider Man than No Way Home. So Amazing Spider Man one number seven. That is Venom number eight. No Way Home number nine. Venom two number ten. Spider Man three number eleven. That's my list for now. So, again, thanks for the request. Take care, guys. I'm sure people. Are, How do you like Amazing Spider Man two? It has issues. Most of these Spider Man movies have issues. But I can at least say, yeah, I like the suit more. I like the action scenes more. I like their stupid shit in that too. Like the fucking ending with the little kid. I get the intention, but it was pulled off wrong in my opinion. They tried to fit too much into one movie. That was, that was his biggest issue. They tried to put too much into one movie. Need to let it breathe. But, you know what? When I watched that again, I'm like, you know what? I'm actually really liking Andrew Garfield. And I'm actually really liking his dialogue. And this shit that we cut out. His, the stuff with his parents. Fuck that shit. That I have a lot of issues with. I did. If you ask me which one I truly enjoy, it's Into the Spider-Verse. And then the cartoons. The ones I truly enjoy, Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse. And because I think Spider-Man works better animated. Based on all the live action stuff, I think he works better as an animated character. The 90s Spider-Man cartoon, Spectacular Spider-Man, the MTV Spider-Man that only lasted one season, Sally, that had Neil Patrick Harris's Spider-Man. And Into the Spider-Verse was animated. And I, I, I'm intrigued by the sequel. Spider-Man 2099, let's go. But live action, I have no interest in seeing any more live action Spider Man movies. So, fuck no way home. We'll see you guys there. Bye bye.